Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next LED lesson number 27, 74 HC 595 and the segment display. In this lesson, we'll check out the Elegoo Kit's seven segment display and how we can use the 74HC595 shift register to control it. We'll go over the tutorial circuit and modify it slightly to demonstrate the functionality. So let's start building. First, a quick overview of the seven segment display. The integrated display is essentially eight LEDs stuck into a single package. They come in two formats, common anode and common cathode. The kit includes a common cathode version, which basically means that the LEDs share a common ground. The common anode version, which isn't included in the kit, shares a common source. Let's represent the display using a simple LED circuit. Here we have eight LEDs. Their cathodes are all connected together, so it's a common cathode configuration. If we were to imagine just one LED connected to a resistor, which was connected to a 5 volt power source, just how big of a resistor would we need? Well, we'd start by calculating the voltage across the resistor. In a series circuit, the voltage drops across each device adds up to the source voltage. A typical red LED drops about 1.8 volts across it. Subtracting 1.8 volts from 5 volts, we get 3.2 volts across the resistor. Next, we choose the maximum current value, something comfortably less than the maximum rating provided in the datasheet. We'll pick 14.5 milliamps. Now, divide 3.2 volts by 14.5 milliamps, and we get 220 ohms. So a 220 ohm resistor is selected for our circuit. Now, what if we connected all the LEDs to the single resistor? Well, the voltage drop across all the parallel LEDs would be about the same, or about 1.8 volts. Therefore, the same 3.2 volts is dropped across the resistor. Thus, the maximum current flow through the resistor is still 14.5 milliamps. The current divides equally to each LED branch, or a measly 1.8 milliamps per LED, resulting in dimly lit LEDs or nothing at all. Now, if we provide separate 220 ohm resistors to each LED branch, each branch would receive a full 14.5 milliamps of current flow. This time, all the LEDs would show correctly and at the same brightness, regardless of how many are turned on. The takeaway here is that if you want each LED segment to have the same brightness, regardless of how many LEDs are turned on, it's probably best to provide individual resistors to each LED branch. Okay, now if you look at this seven segment diagram, we see five pins on top and five pins on bottom. Now, if we add a letter to each pin, we get a better idea on what needs to be turned on to create whatever number we desire. The diagram on page 180 is just sort of confusing, so let's just ignore that for now. The schematic diagram typically used is even simpler with all the pins to one side. Also note that the segment letter is next to the pins. Just keep track of the output shift register pins and what segment they're controlling. On page 181, there's a common cathode table. The left column is the desired display number. The rows across show the corresponding segment LEDs to be turned on but it's not the complete picture. We also need to show the output pins of the shift register. Here's my spreadsheet that corresponds to tutorial sketch pinout. Unfortunately, the sketch is different than page 181. So to be clear, I'm showing the sketch values here. The top row in blue is the individual LED segments. Above that are the shift register pins connected to each LED. And above that, are the binary numeric values assigned to each pin. It looks a bit overwhelming, but trust me, it's not that hard. But first, I think I better explain how the number values translate into individual shift register outputs, which turns on the corresponding LED segments. In lesson 24, I discussed the inner workings of a shift register, so I'll just show the simplified circuit diagram. 
As we shift out the binary value, the ones and zeros work their way through the shift register until all eight outputs are set. So the first bit value that is sent is always going to be on the output Q7. This is important because depending on how you define the output pin order, you'll need to use the least significant bit first or the most significant bit first parameter in the shift out command. For example, if I define my pins as shown here from zero through seven, to get the rightmost binary value to Q7, I need to use a least significant bit first in my shift out command. To me, this seems sort of backwards. I like to organize my pins from seven through zero with the seven being the most significant bit in the binary number. In that case, I need to use the most significant bit first in the shift out command. Whatever way you decide, an easy way to remember which parameter to use is that the first bit going to the shift register will end up on output pin Q7. If your pin seven is on the right, so as the least significant bit in the binary number, use the least significant bit first. If your pin seven is on the left, so as the most significant bit in a binary number, use the most significant bit first. So the first thing you wanna do when you create your own table is decide the output pin order. Here we have output pins from zero through seven. Above these are the given decimal equivalents to the binary positions. These are fixed and they don't need to be changed. Now below the output pins are the LED segments that are directly controlled by the corresponding output pins. This is important because your future projects may be wired differently than what's provided in this tutorial. Next, it's just a matter of entering a value of one in each cell below the appropriate LED segment that needs to be turned on for the corresponding display number. The table on page 181 could be used as a guide. Since this is a spreadsheet, I can also calculate the decimal, hexadecimal, or binary values to use in the sketch. Here's the table with the output pins ordered from seven through zero. Of course, this time I need to use the most significant bit first parameter in the shift out command. The data sheet and the tutorial may have additional information on the seven segment display so you may want to check them out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Uno R3 board. The 74HC595 shift register IC. Seven segment, one digit display. Eight 220 ohm resistors. The breadboard. And a bunch of male to male jumper wires. On page 182, you'll see the following schematic. Now it's very orderly with the output Q0 going to LED segment A, Q1 going to B, and so on. So I decided to change things up. Here's my schematic diagram. I kept the same Arduino output pins as in lesson 24, and I was attempting to reduce the number of spaghetti jumpers. Well, let me show you. On page 183, you'll see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 185. Just look at that spaghetti mess. So here's my wiring diagram. Right off the bat, you'll notice fewer jumpers, but there's a trade-off. The output pins had to be rearranged. I'll go over this in detail when we get to the sketch. As in lesson 24, the DS of the shift register is connected to pin 12. The latch clock to pin 11, and the register clock to pin 9. Output enable pin is connected to ground, and the master reset is connected to the power rail. All the outputs are connected to 220 ohm resistors to one of the LED segments, which I'll cover more later. Since this is a common cathode seven segment display, the center pins on each side of the display is connected to ground. And of course, there's the power and ground of the shift register and the power and ground of the Arduino to the breadboard rails. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open. 
and browse to where you saved the Elegoo files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 27, 74 HC 595 and segment display, under the underscore 75 HC, and open the underscore 75 HC dot INO file. Looking at the code, you'll see it starts by defining a byte array, seven segment digits, size to 10. That'll conveniently hold the byte values for zero through nine. This is followed by a list of binary values that correspond to the display number. These are the values that will change in a little bit. Then we have the integer variables, latch pin, clock pin, and data pin, which will change right now to 11, 9, and 12. The void setup sets the pin modes for the latch pin, clock pin, and data pin to output. Simple. The void seven segment write is very similar to lesson 24's update shift register function. It starts by performing a digital write to set the latch pin low. Like before, this prevents the output from changing. The shift out command shifts out one bit at a time to the data pin using the least significant bit first parameter. The pass parameter digit will reference which array bit value is sent. The last digital write sets the latch pin high, which outputs all the bit values simultaneously. The void loop starts with a for loop, setting a local byte digit to 10, and as long as it's greater than zero, perform the loop and then decrement the value at the end of the loop. Inside the loop, there's a one second delay and then a call to the function seven segment write, passing the parameter digit and subtracting that value by one. Now I'm not sure why they didn't just simply set the digit to nine and check if the value is greater than or equal to zero. That way we would need to subtract one from the value before passing it. Huh. Well, let's change that now. Change 10 to nine. Now add an equal sign after the greater than symbol. Then we'll delete the minus one. Okay. So what the loop does is count down from nine to zero once it's completed, it delays for three seconds, even though the comment says four, and then it repeats. But before we upload the code, we need to revise the seven segment digits array above. Let's jump to the spreadsheet again. The top row is the values for the binary positions, and these don't change. The next row is the output pins, which I ordered from seven through zero. Below this, we'll add the corresponding LED segments. The wiring diagram shows how the shift register outputs are routed to the seven segment display. But the schematic may be a little easier to read. Seven is connected to G, so we'll enter G under the cell for pin seven. Now we'll just repeat this for the other pins. Six is connected to F, five is connected to E, 4 is connected to D, 3 is connected to C, 2 is connected to the DP or the decimal point, 1 is connected to A, and 0 is connected to B. Okay, for digit 0, I'll enter a 1 for the F, E, D, C, A, and B cells. Adding zeros in the blank cells is optional at this point. I also want to point out that if we were going to use a common anode seven segment display, I would enter zeros rather than ones, and then I'd have to put in the ones in the blank cells. Since this is a spreadsheet, I can calculate the decimal value using the sum product function and using the top row as one array and the row I just filled in as the other. Then by using the decimal to hexadecimal function, I can get the hexadecimal value, and using the decimal to binary function, 
I can get the binary value. I wrap these in a concatenated function to add the hex and binary text indicators. I just repeat this for the remaining rows and I can select all the binary values and the associated comments and copy them. And paste them here. A little indent adjustment and we're done. Let's upload the code and try it out. And here's the circuit. We have a similar hookup, like I said before, from lesson 24, we have a DS pin that is connected to pin 12. We have the latch pin that's connected to, or latch clock pin rather, it's connected to uh, pin 11 and the register shift register clock pin connected to pin 9. Then we, of course, we have power and ground. Here's the shift register. And like the schematic diagram, you can see that here right off the zero, there's a little resistor jumps up, goes to this little jumper right here, and just tucks underneath the, uh, the seven segment display here. And that occurs over here and here and here. Um, but overall, it's a lot fewer spaghetti jumpers uh, like the tutorial was showing. And you can see it just simply counts down from nine to zero. Pretty simple. Okay, I got a little carried away here, but I decided to go ahead and expand the seven segment display sketch. So like before, we're using the same mapping and I kind of move the hardware definitions to the top here because I kind of like it that way. And along with the seven segment digits, which I kind of just slightly revised the name, I went ahead and added the seven, seg the seven segment uh, display or decimal point and the seven segment alpha characters. So I added a few alpha characters basically doing the same thing we did for the digital characters. I added a global variable to keep track of a decimal point just so that I can show it and not show it. And that's all that's for. The void setup stayed the same. The void seven segment right is basically the same. I have the byte digit value like before, but this time I have a Boolean value DP or Boolean value DP, which is basically for the Boolean decimal point. And I have this set up default, so it's an optional parameter. And then I have a third parameter, which I included a char switch value. Right now it has, it's set to D. So it's also an optional parameter. And that way I can have a toggle between the alpha, a binary value, or just a plain digit. Along with that same line, I added an if statement. So it basically checks if it's an alpha or if it's binary. Otherwise, it just assumes it's a digit. I included uh, another seven segment blank. It was just an easy way to just provide a blank screen. The void loop, I have a, uh, it's basically a, a change state display for the add, the Boolean add decimal point, And it just sets itself to the opposite value. And that way, every time it loops through, it just keeps changing. I guess I could have made that at the end rather than at the beginning, but nonetheless, wherever it seems to be working. And I had the same for loop that counts uh, from counts down from nine to zero, like we had before, except for I decided to move the delay to after we write the value. It just seemed logical that you would write the value, then you have a delay, and then you write the next value, and then you have a delay versus a delay and then a value. Just seem backwards there. And then I go ahead and make a, a blank segment. So basically it blanks the display, a small delay, and then I count up from zero to nine, basically doing the same thing. A little blank and a delay, and then I go through the alpha characters. Now the alpha characters are from uh, right now, zero through eight in that array. You could add more if you wanted to, or you could do something like if you had, um, if you were, choosing a char value, 
you could, uh, a typical A would be uh, char value of 65, I believe. And then you could just simply subtract 65 from whatever value you were looking for. And you can get your values from A through I, I believe. Have a small uh, uh, blank right here. And then I have, um, I thought it'd be useful if you just want just to see each of the segments turn on one at a time. So each of these turns on one segment at a time. And lastly, I included a little secret message to YouTube. Finally, I have a, a final blank and then it just simply loops. So you can see here's the new display. It's relatively the same as before. We count down from nine to zero. There's a small blank space and then it goes from zero to nine. Now blank, and then we have some alpha characters that I try to create. And then the individual segments. And lastly, here's the little secret message to YouTube. Did you catch it? Then it, it runs through and adds the little decimal point since that toggles that state on or that decimal point state on. And it basically repeats the whole thing. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the seven segment display and controlling it using a 74 HC 595 shift register. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 28, four digital seven segment display. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and click that notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. Thanks and see you next time.